Uh, whose puppy is that? He never barks. He never ever barks. Hold on one second. I swear this to is, God. Oh, man. This is the fu- this yeah. is funny. Oh, this he is never, funny. He, does, he never barks. He is. A That's shit okay. Leader. Welcome to Connections with BCD Travel, an ongoing conversation about the modern day travel program, the impact of technology and digitization, and how travel buyers can take control and drive change. Each episode leaves you with practical, actionable advice and solutions to support a variety of program needs. Let's start connecting. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Connections with BCD Travel. My name is Chad Lemon, and I'm your host for the Connections podcast. And I'm Miriam Moscovich, a lead partnerships and intelligence at BCD. Thanks for tuning in. We'd love to hear your feedback. So after listening, be sure to leave us a review or rating on the Connections podcast. Well, Miriam, the podcast launched with our first six episodes and some bonus material and the response has been amazing i'm looking forward to moving into this next phase where we continue conversations and introduce some new topics and even bring on some new guests i agree i had a lot of fun recording the first six i have to admit i was a little nervous on the reception but so far (laughs) so good yeah Um, i'm looking forward to having some fun with the next series of podcasts we're set to record so today we are taking a slightly different approach to this episode you know, usually focus on one topic or a digital solution that BCD Travel has. But today, our guest is Rosanna Martin, Senior Vice President of Global Sales. And we'll be talking to her about the state of the travel industry and what her team is hearing and what sets BCD apart from other TMCs. Rosanna, I'm so excited to have you on Connections. Welcome. Tell us a little bit about yourself. I am Rosanna Martin, and I'm based in Detroit. I lead a team of North American-based individual sales contributors. Thank you so much for having me. I'm super excited to be here. I've listened to the first six podcasts, so my excitement is at an all-time high. Rosanna, let's start at the beginning. Uh, from your perspective, what would you say is the state of the travel industry right now? Well, I could talk about this subject for days, but since this is a podcast, I'll focus on just a few areas, and I promise not to talk about NBC. I think from a travel recovery, what we're seeing, so there's some bad news, right? China, travel demand skyrocketing after the government reopened borders. As our MD of China, Jonathan Cow, shared in a recent video, Chinese travelers are keen to resume trips, and many want their trip to be international for their next trip. But issues like passport renewals and visa requirements are causing friction. Visa processing centers in China are overwhelmed, and the earliest available appointments are in July. As travel continues to grow, companies are also facing a challenging cost environment. According to Deloitte's Corporate Travel Survey for 2023, after high prices, traveler needs for flexibility and comfort are creating the biggest pressures on travel budgets. The good news, and there's some light at the end of the tunnel, right? Our M&E business is booming, so it's BCD meetings and events. They're at almost pre-pandemic volumes already. On the corporate side, there is a lot of pent-up demand, so we're seeing a large uptick in volumes. And we anticipate here being at 80% of pre-pandemic levels on the corporate side this year. And interestingly enough, markets like Peru and Chile have been above pre-pandemic levels for quite some time. And previously, more than 80% of travel buyers with pain elected to stay with their suppliers, so hotel suppliers, TMCs, but now there's more of an appetite to change. You couple all of this with our record new business wins for BCD. In fact, we won our largest account ever in 2022 during the pandemic. So at BCD, we're actually seeing positive signs all around. All of this means that as TMCs, we need to be agile. And what we're focusing on include more flexible travel policies and looking at new requirements for flexibility and duty of care. Sustainability and travel is here to stay. It's not just a nicety anymore. It's a necessity. DE&I and employee well-being, sustainability is going beyond the environment and is incorporating DE&I, procurement, ethical business practices, and supporting local communities. People want to know their employers care about them, not just transactionally, but relationship as well. So I want to dig into this mindset of TMCs needing to be even more agile than they were pre-pandemic. What are travel programs asking you and your team for reassurance on? What are they most interested in knowing right now? Well, I think we all know that the travel industry's reputation has taken a hit, right? There's a sense of risk that's now attached to a sector that was so directly impacted by the pandemic. I think 
then, as you know, this is a really discouraged new entrance into travel. And many furloughed employees in the travel industry chose not to return back. Um, so that has really created a pretty big hole. I don't think anyone was really prepared for the way travel came back either. I think that surge in travel, as you know, has also caused ripple effects across the industry. So whether it's canceled flights, hold time, supplier capacity issues, and just other, you know, there's a whole myriad of service challenges that we've seen. It's affected agent productivity and TMCs needed to be agile to manage through those challenges. From a staffing perspective, I think we've all struggled in this area in some way, right? All TMCs, all suppliers. Travel buyers are really asking TMCs very direct questions about how they've planned to solve for the challenges. And for example, why are they an employer of choice? And so just briefly to talk about how we've creatively managed through this whole thing, we're now an approved partner of the Military Spouse Employee Partnership. Yep, me too. And we're expanding our travel apprentice uh, program to attract new talent. And those classes have gone very well. In fact, they were full. Um, and those agents are doing really well. Yeah, we've had a lot of success with that. And it's nice to bring in new, fresh talent into the industry. So that's good to see. We're also focusing on improving the candidate experience and the overall employee experience. So it's not just when you join the organization, but looking at it as a whole. And I think being an employer of choice is more important than ever. As the most admired TMC 10 times in the recent past, and actually we're one of FlexJob's top 100 companies to watch for remote jobs, we believe we're an employer of choice. From a financial stability perspective, I think travel suppliers post-COVID and looking at that as a critical component of discussions with all travel suppliers. Travel managers are really concerned about TMC solvency, not only now, but well into the future. This has prompted a fairly large increase in bids, as I mentioned before. Um, you'd be surprised the amount of bids we worked on in the past where financial stability wasn't a concern. In the past, I think people thought if they were looking at a top 25 TMC, there was really no reason to question financial stability. They may have asked us a few questions about financials or asked for copies of our financial statements, but that was the extent of it. I think what we're seeing now is some competitors had high net debt. They're still struggling post-COVID largely because they had high net debt going into the pandemic. To be truly agile, you need to be financially solvent. And I think, you know, having that low net debt and fiscal responsibility pre-COVID helped us tremendously. And we've always been focused on preparing for the next, next generation. I think investment and innovation is on buyers' minds. I think there's more of a focus on a 12-month roadmap which is a new mindset among travel buyers and prospect, or just, I guess, just travel suppliers in general. They used to ask for a five-year roadmap, but that isn't relevant anymore because things are changing at such a fast pace. And also the investment in, in area. So we've continued to invest in digital solutions. I think there were some pandemic-driven solutions, our award-winning COVID hub, our back to travel guide, but we've always kept our eye on a post-COVID world. I think travel buyers also want flexibility in tech, and this is where our marketplace of fully vetted third-party solutions really shines. Rosina, I want to ask you how conversations with travel managers and travel buyers, how have those conversations been changing? I know you brought up some topics uh, with that first question, but how are you all responding to some of those bigger topics that you're hearing about right now? Yeah, there are a few areas, Chad, that come to mind. I think program staffing Many clients are kind of shifting the way that they think about staffing for their program. I think they're looking at designated versus dedicated staffing models. We've also been asked for more program management resources regionally and globally, which is a, a, definitely a trend that we're seeing. So we've led with, we felt the, the program needed and they're asking for more. And I think they're also asking for outsourced travel management resources more than ever. Yeah, it's interesting. And then on the financial model side, we really haven't seen greater adoption of non-transaction fee pricing. I think rather and in line with dedicated staffing, we're seeing a shift to cost plus versus transaction fee models. 
And some clients are asking about subscription fees, but I think moving from a pay-as-you-go model to a subscription or other charge subscription hybrid model requires a complete change of mindset. And I don't think many clients are ready to select that kind of model. Um, the, the lastly, I'll talk about culture, sustainability, ESG, and DEI. Companies want to partner with like-minded companies. More and more, we're seeing more questions about our cultural alignment, our mission and vision, and how it aligns with theirs. They want to know details about our sustainability efforts. They want to know hard data, not just overall overarching topics. They want to know they're working for that or working with a like-minded uh, company. So it sounds like programs are really looking for that partner who can deliver more than just operational excellence. They want a partner whose culture and identity really aligns and resonates with their identity. Yes. And I think that's a very accurate statement, Miriam. I think collaboration across all aspects of our business is at an all-time high. And quite honestly, it's exciting to see where we're going with that. But all that aside, TMCs still need to deliver operationally, right? I mean, and that all comes down to engaging the right digital solutions and technologies to help the travel program out. Absolutely, Chad. There is a definite shift in mindset when it comes to technology. So we're listening to travel buyers and investing heavily in technology that really makes sense based on travel program needs. I think especially in an increasingly tech-focused world. I think generally speaking, our digital investments focus on four areas. So looking at streamlined distribution, a simplified digital experience, modern delivery models, and data-driven innovation. And I think some things that really come to mind here at BCD, BCD Invite, which is our replacement for guest travel manager, BCD Pay, which is a suite of solutions that use AI, machine learning, and open APIs to simplify digitize and automate corporate payments, uh, reconciliation and invoice management. The result is a frictionless digital payment experience from trip booking and payment through reconciliation. This is a very large pain point for the majority of customers. I think the last number I saw was 72%. So we, we think this is a, a really great solution. And I look at instant query with decision source. So investing in next-gen insights and analytics to provide buyers with an even better experience. Rosanna, I know you can rattle off a million reasons why BCD is the TMC of choice, but given everything we've discussed, why do you think we have the highest retention rate in the industry? Well, I think I'd start with our brand differentiators, which are partnership, simplicity, and innovation. I think that's the heart of it. We want to be more than a supplier. We actually become an integral part of travel buyers' teams. We also help them to make the complex simple. So makes making sense of all of the endless possibilities in travel and putting innovation at the heart of our vision and our customers' travel programs. We're agile. I think our blueprint for success is underpinned by exceeding travel buyers' expectations and living the core values. And while we're the number two global TMC, our CEO, John Snyder, has always said the goal is not to be the biggest, but rather be the best. We're known for a stable leadership, financial stability, and continued investment and innovation. We care about our people and we're investing significantly in not only attracting that talent, but retaining them. And we continue to focus on embedding DE&I into our daily work and measuring its impact across our ent entire employee life cycle. I can't say enough about our consulting arm, Advito. They're the industry thought leader. They're differentiators like traveler engagement and their dynamic performance management practice are game changers. They've also achieved ISO certification for its one-of-a-kind proprietary carbon emissions calculation methodology called Gate 4. It is, again, another game changer in the industry. And I think being named the most admired TMC for the 10th time in recent years speaks to the caliber and the talent of our people across the globe. We're the market leader in A&D, entertainment, and life sciences, and have very niche offerings within these sectors, and that shows. And lastly, we're transparent and we deliver on our promises. The result of all of this is that industry-leading retention rate and record sales years that I spoke about. You know, the most admired TMC award is the one that we're all the most prou proud of winning because we know that that is an award we get voted on by our peers in the industry. Um, so we're really proud of that. I always get Absolutely. so excited. Yes, I agree. 
So what, uh, what conversations should travel programs be having with their TMC right now? What do you wish travel manager would, a- would ask you more? Well, can I change this up a bit? I actually like to start with this question, Miriam. So how do your travel stakeholders define success? You know, it goes beyond the whole SLA and KPI discussion. If there are multiple stakeholders involved in the program, what are their drivers and how do those align with corporate goals? I think from a a travel manager question to ask their current TMC, I have four questions. So let me go through those really quickly. So who else within our company would be valuable to be engaged or re-engaged in the program activities? So for example, we know there's gatekeepers out there. I think many of us have connected with other new departments over the last couple of years, but how do we make sure we're engaging with them without having the contacts feel threatened? How do we help them know it's only going to increase the success of the program? I think number two, how can I drive greater compliance and savings? So whether it's through price assurance, electronic ticket recycle program, stay by BCD and other tools, how can I get better compliance? Number three, how can I better communicate to travelers? So what is our traveler engagement strategy? How can we communicate throughout all uh, cycle, the trip life cycle with TripSource, for example? And number four, how can I better track, report, and predict? So using decision source and instant query and some analytics, how can I take actionable insights from my program and make things happen? How can I optimize the program and how can it result in cost savings? I think what I would like people to ask BCD, so I'm going to give you a list here of of just a couple of things. First, if we were a new client, what would you suggest to enhance the program? I think people have been so caught up in building back their program, they haven't taken the time to consider changes to their program. Some are, but there's still some that aren't. So I think that You know, we make suggestions on the program management side and travel buyers discount the suggestion because of other priorities. But even when the suggestion will offer a return on investment, cost them nothing and with little to no work on their part. So I think they need to refocus on that. I think, too, often we see the same basic questions that aren't really relevant anymore. I think everyone knows we can issue tickets, right? But questions should be about the so what and what are the unique benefits of what we are proposing, pitching, or providing, and why should it matter to the client? So more questions about our success with customers and case studies, and how can we use those to help them? I think, uh, lastly, more questions about cultural alignment, um, as well as the return on investment versus just that transactional pricing. I think we're offering these answers to clients, but they have the right to ask these questions um, on a regular basis. They deserve to have answers to that. Rosanna, we always like to ask where a travel manager or travel buyer should go if they want to, you know, continue this conversation about what they've heard on this episode or discuss anything that you have brought up today. Yeah, I think they can go to their BCD program manager or a BCD salesperson, and they can always reach out to me and I can point them in the right direction. Make sure they follow us on LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Follow our blog, download the podcast. And also follow Vito and BCD m and The bottom line is we're all in this together and we need to help each other to be successful. So we're here to help do that. Well, this was a great episode, but let's learn a little bit more about you, Rosanna. We like to call this segment Quick Connect. And I'm going to ask some questions. And without thinking, I want everyone to blurt out the first thing that comes to mind. So up first, what is your most embarrassing moment you've had while traveling for work? Oh, there's so many. But I think the (laughs) one that really stands out, and this is a, uh, a good lesson for a lot of people. I was going on a trip, and I was, rarely I use carry on. It was just a carry on trip. And I wore these super cute boots. Um, I went through security and I'm sitting at the gate and I look down and I'm wearing the same boots, but one is brown and one is black. <laughs> and so I, um, I ended up um, buying the same pair of boots what? In, in brown and black. So don't do that. <laughs> oh my gosh. Especially when you're packing super early in the morning and you don't want to wake your family up. You're just throwing that's, things in your suitcase. That's a classic story. That is good. 
So my story is um, I went to a meeting uh, a couple of years ago and I was there to represent a project I was working on at the time. And, and I was there to talk to the, the U.S. leadership team of BCD about what I needed. And I kept referring to somebody in finance. His name is Mike Fantazzo. And I kept referring to him in the meeting saying, Mike Fantazzo wants this. Mike Fantazzo wants that. Mike Fantazzo told me this. And at some point, somebody in the meeting looked at me. I think it must have been Amy Dalton. And she says, for those of you listening who know Amy Dalton, she says, what is wrong with you, Miriam? And I'm like, what do you mean? And she said, Mike, why are you calling him Mike Fantazzo? He's sitting right beside you. You can just call him Mike. And I think it's classic, right? (laughs) Working remotely for 15, 16 years. I have been working with Mike. He's in our accounting department in finance. I've been working with Mike for over a dozen years and I'd never met him in person. So the whole time in the meeting, I was referring to him as his full name. So everyone knew who I was talking about. He's sitting literally to my left. Like, so I wish I was like, you're the Mike I've been working with for 12 years. I had no idea. So it's pretty embarrassing. I, uh, Miriam, you might remember the story of me in my early twenties and going to Italy for like 24 or 36 hours. Um, this goes into that one. Uh, as we were checking in for our flight, there was a glass vase full of flowers kind of on this like check-in ticket counter. Um, and I'm wearing this huge backpack and I go to turn to go to security and my backpack hits that glass vase. And when I tell you all, when it shatters on the ground, it's like the entire airport stopped and everyone started looking and pointing and laughing, you know, stupid kid and all this. I was mortified and uh, we were running so late. I just had to leave and say sorry and run away. I still feel bad about it, but I was mortified. And that's the tale of how the very last vase on an airline (laughs) check-in counter was taken away. The very last one. (laughs) Oh man. Um, Best memory while traveling for work? This is a tough one because there really are so many, right? You know, it's Mm -hmm. hard being on the road sometimes and being away from your family, but your work family becomes your family, right? And so that's right. Mm -hmm. I I think one of my best memories is someone who's now retired um, from the industry. We were going into a best and final, and in order to get psyched up for it, they always played whatever pop star was, you know, happening at the time. You know, we'd play that music and we would do the Superman pose and then we would be on, right? And so it really, even if we were prepping for hours and hours for these meetings, it really helped us to to sort of come together and um, focus as a team. So I, I look back, we did that so many times and, and our success rate together was 100%. So oh. whatever that formula was, it worked. Oh, that's a, that's a sweet one. <laughs> I like that. Maybe a sweet memory. This actually happened with April, um, a previous guest on this podcast. She and I used to travel quite a bit together. We were coming back to Chicago. Um, This was years ago, and we were in baggage claims. We must have checked our bags. We were waiting, and we noticed there were about five or six couples um, hugging and waiting in uh, in the baggage claim area, and they were kind of embracing each other and We weren't quite sure what was happening. And just as, you know, just as we were about to walk out, the doors in arrivals, international arrivals opened and out came these people carrying infant babies. And these couples started to cry and weep and they handed these babies to these couples, you know, there's five or six couples there. And this was, uh, you know, a delivery of adoptions. Um, These couples had been waiting for these children for over a year, a couple of years um, and just witnessing that and seeing the emotion of these people who had waited for their children for so long to finally get to that moment where they get to meet mm. their children for the first time coming from, I'm not sure where they were coming from, but it's quite an incredible moment to witness um, these families get formed in real time um, in, you know, in the airport. I was in Kansas City hosting an event for athletes with special needs, uh, which is always a really great event. I always look forward to it every single year. Um, but I had this dad come up to me and he was holding back tears and I thought he was just going to say, you know, thank you so much. We had a great time. Um, but I sat and talked with him for a second and it stuck with me forever. 
He said he spent the first two hours of the event in complete and utter shock because it was the first time in his life he had heard people clap and cheer and encourage his son. And it just, you know, kind of made my world stop right there and think, you know, how cool and how great uh, that we all got to experience that moment with him and their family and, you know, everyone at that event. It's just hands down my favorite work memory ever. Well, at the top of the show, Miriam said we were going to take a slightly different direction with this episode, but I am so glad we did, and I am so thankful to have you on the podcast, Rosanna. You're such a wealth of uh, knowledge, and you really have your finger on the pulse of the industry. Really appreciate you. I'm glad we got to bring you on, Rosanna. Thanks for joining us. Thank you to you both. I really, really enjoyed being in the podcast. If you're a travel buyer, a frequent business traveler, or just someone who likes hearing about business travel and partnering with the best TMC, be sure to like, subscribe, follow, and download the Connections with BCD Travel podcast to stay up to date with new releases and listen to your favorite episodes. Thank you for connecting with us. BCD Travel helps customers travel smart and achieve more. We make this happen in over 100 countries with a global client retention rate of 97% the highest in the industry. Learn more about the information you heard today and what BCD Travel can do for you by visiting bcdtravel.com forward slash podcast.